Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, transgressive literature, uh, I want to talk to you about The Story of the Eye by Georges Bataille. So this is a book I read as part of my ongoing project to read disturbing books that were recommended to me um, by viewers. So a while ago I made a video uh, about a book called Notice by Heather Lewis, uh, which I called the most disturbing book that I've ever read. And loads of people have suggested other books um, that they found disturbing in the comments for that video. Uh, and I'm gradually working my way through them. Um, and this is the latest one. So this was a, definitely a fascinating uh, book, definitely disturbing at times, um, but I wouldn't call it a deeply disturbing book, um, although it's definitely got some very extreme moments. Um, so I started this video by saying that this was going to be a video about transgressive literature. Um, so this is, you know, definitely a good example of that. Um, and transgressive art generally um, is art that looks to, um, to outrage people, um, to violate basic morals and sensibilities that society holds. And, that, and that's the definition um, I've got from the Oracle Wikipedia. Um, so this is definitely a book that does that. And if you think about, you know, I was trying to think about other forms of, of art or entertainment, which I, you know, think of as being transgressive in that way. You think of things like, you know, the punk rock movement of the 70s, um, the surrealist movement of the 20s and 30s. A lot of stuff in there, I think, is transgressive. Um, and the, the films of John Waters, uh, a filmmaker who I absolutely love, who just goes out of his way to be disgusting and offend people. Um, so I think those are all examples of transgressive fiction or transgressive art. Um, the question, I suppose, is why do that? Why be deliberately outrageous? Why go out of your way to offend? And I think it's, I think part of the reason for it is that it, it holds up a mirror to our own morals, doesn't it? It makes us think about what we consider to be normal, um, what we consider to be good and wholesome and things like that. And by, by making us confront the opposite of that, it maybe makes us reflect a bit more on the, you know, the things in our lives that are, that are good things. Now, clearly, it can also be a disruptive thing. And, and, you know, punk in particular was something that was intended to be disruptive and, and did disrupt. Um, but what you tend to find with transgressive stuff over time is, I think, uh, or this would be my view anyway, is that it becomes normal. So, you know, punk rock may have been incredibly shocking um, in the early 70s. Um, but by the late 90s, it was incredibly mainstream and, you know, had become boring. Um so I think things do definitely lose their ability to shock over time. The thing that's interesting about this book is that it's still pretty shocking. So this was written in 1928. Um, so there are four different versions of this book um, that Georges Bataille published over the course of about 40 years. This, uh, and I think they were all published in French originally. This is the English translation of the, the first version, um, albeit it does have some later kind of information in the book from a, from a subsequent version. Um, so how does this book, um, you know, how is this book transgressive? So this is a book really about three young people, teenagers, um, who have sex with each other, basically, but they do it in increasingly unusual and risky, even dangerous ways, um, and their sexual appetites take them to some some very dark places. There is some, you know, some stuff. You know, it's a, it's a gradual ramp up, and some of the early stuff is the kind of, and I'm not going to go into details, um, but, you know, the, the kind of stuff which you would consider to be um, maybe a bit kinky, but but relatively tame, to, to the point that by the end of the book it is, you know, far, <laughs> far from that. Um, and I, I won't tell you, um, I won't go, you know, into any details of that, because I think it would spoil the book. But um, the title, you know, the title gives some clues. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, so it does go to some very strange, very dark, very disturbing places. But the thing for me that made it not a particularly disturbing book um, is that it all feels very unreal. It's got a real kind of dreamlike feel all the way through it. It feels very surreal. And, you know, some of the acts that they are doing are so, so unusual and, and hard to imagine anyone taking pleasure from in, in real life. Um, 
that it gives the that it gives the book that kind of slightly surreal, dreamlike, nightmarish um, sense. Um, so it's definitely got that, that. You know, it definitely feels like it draws on um, the work of the surrealists as well. Um, but I have to say, I found it a really, really interesting book. And one of the things that's fascinating about it is its kind of relationship to psychology. So Georges Bataille, there's there's a, a and some kind of um, afterwards and things like that in here where he talks about his motivation for writing the book um, and what he was trying to the kind of demons of his own that he was trying to exercise through writing it and it occurred to me that often when we read when we read works of fiction we try to analyze the author um, we try and think about their motivations for including a particular character or you know talking about a particular thing um, and increasingly in the, in the modern world, we, we look to try and understand the writer's politics and maybe critique their politics as well as their, you know, the actual story in their writing. Um, but it's fairly rare, I think, that the authors talk really explicitly about why they've written the things that they've written. And it may be that increasingly they're a bit nervous of doing that because of the scrutiny they might get. Um, I think what's really interesting about this is that, that Bataille goes out of his way to do that. Um, he talks in a lot of detail about events from his childhood, which influenced what's in the book, and, and also talks very openly about the fact he doesn't really understand why. He, kn he knows that those things that happened to him before you know, have, have left him with lingering images and things like that, which he ended up putting down on the page. But, but he doesn't necessarily understand it all. And that was, I thought, really, um, A, really interesting, but also, um, I want to say heartwarming. Heartwarming is the wrong word. It, it put him, it made him a fascinating character to me as an author. So despite the horrific things, some of the horrific things that happen in this book, it made me warm to him as a, as a human being, as another person out there who stuff has happened to that they don't get. Um, and, you know, all of us, have things that happen in our lives which just bewilder us and and have a lasting impact on our lives and we you know we can't always pin down exactly why that thing keeps on recurring to us um and that seems to be very much what this is about it's almost like a therapy session in in written form it's him trying to work these things through um and his his writing is sufficiently good that that you as a reader get transported on that journey with him. Um, and in particular, you know, the use of symbolism. So the eye as a symbol comes up again and again and again in this book. And he talks about that in in the um, in his afterword. Um, so really, really interesting stuff. And quite unlike, I don't know if I want to say it's unlike anything I've ever read, but it's certainly not like most of the books I've read. Um, just for that sense of it being so, so deeply personal and and... Bataille really opening himself up to everybody and just, you know, bearing his soul to the world by writing this. Um, there are also some, um, there are also a couple of essays by other people at the end of this, which are really interesting. So there's one by Susan Tontag um, about pornography, where she talks about this. She talks about story, the, uh, the story of O um, and some other books. So that was really interesting. And then there's also one on symbolism by Roland Barthes, which was, which was very interesting as well. Um, and it's been a long time since I've read uh, that kind of um, academic text. I've read both of those authors when I was at university, but I don't think I have since. Um, so it was really interesting to read something like that again and not something I would normally read. But I was so fascinated by what, by what went on in the book and by the, the motivations behind the author that reading some analysis at the end um, I found really helpful. Um, so it's great that, that Penguin have included those two essays in here and also great that they've included them at the end because so often in books like this, which are you know reprints of, of classics, you get... Um, you get that analytical stuff at the start and it spoils the book for you. Um, so yeah, it was um, it was a really interesting read. And, and it made me think about the nature of disturbing fiction and how personal a thing it is as well. So as I've said, this book certainly had disturbing moments, but I didn't find it nearly as disturbing as, as, as notice. And I do, it feels like that there's a, you know, this is definitely a work of transgressive fiction. Um, you know, it definitely goes out to break taboos and things like that. And it feels like there's kind of a Venn diagram of disturbing books and um, 
transgressive books where there's probably a pretty big overlap, but there's no by, by no means a complete overlap. Um, so that's something I think I need to think about as I read as I read more of these disturbing books and, and kind of work through my my thinking on on the subject matter. Um, so yes, a, a really interesting book. I definitely recommend it. It is shocking um, at times, so um, you know bear that in mind going into it. Uh, and on that note, one of the things I've been trying to do for a while now is include whenever I do a review on the channel of a book, a dedicated review, to do a, a written review as well on my blog. And to include in that review de more details of the book, uh, and I've just completely failed to do that recently. Um, it's just there's just too much putting out a video every day and then writing a couple of written reviews a week as well. I just can't manage that um, that volume as well as having a life and a, and a full time job. Um, so what I am going to do, I think, is start including in my review videos like this one within the description for the video and I'll put it I'll put it down the description a bit so you don't accidentally trip over it details of the book so things like the ISBN number of the version I read number of pages that you know that kind of basic information and also some content warnings so if people are looking for those they can just find them in the description for the video um, so I will start doing that um, I will try to keep doing it um, but it's uh, you know it is one more, it is one more thing to do. Um, I also wanted to say in terms of um, you know kind of uh, further notes, um, I would thoroughly recommend the channel Play by Visions if you don't subscribe to it already. Um, so Juan Valencia, who runs that channel, is far more informed on transgressive fiction in particular, on lots of things, but in particular on transgressive fiction than I am, and talks about it a lot on the channel and talks about it in great depth but also, you know, really interestingly. So, what you know, Juan's videos tend to be quite long. They tend to be kind of 40, 45 minutes, but they are always fascinating. And it, you feel like you have come away from those videos educated in a way that I suspect people don't feel when they come away from mine. Um, he has talked about this book in the past on his channel, I believe. So um, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description for this. I definitely recommend um, checking him out if this is the kind of thing that interests you. So time for a random book from the shelves. Today I've got another one which I will be reading for my Disturbing Books project. Um, but uh, something completely different in that this is, you know, I, th I think the story of the eye can legitimately be called a work of art. Um, I suspect that this book, Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison, um, that is less true of. Um, this is supposed to be, you know, very extreme, very disturbing, deliberately graphic. Um, whereas I think the story of the eye was... What's the word I want to look for? He was very thoughtful about being graphic. Um, whereas my understanding of this, and I haven't read it yet, is that it just goes all out. Um, so we will see what, what I make of this when I read it, and I will report back in a future video. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you've read Story of the Eye and what you thought of it. Let me know if you've read other transgressive fiction um, and what you thought of that. And if there's any recommendations you have for me of books you think um, I should feature on the channel. Um, I certainly found it a really, really interesting book. And as I say, quite thoughtful in the way it went, um, you know, went out to break taboos. Do also check out Juan's channel. Um, and remember, going forward to look for, in the descriptions of my videos, look for information about the, the books where it's a, a single book review video. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.